Blade of Chris, to, of Chris Hollis. Um, really, he's on that, that 14 creature main deck, so it's four Geist, four Snapcaster, four Restoration Angel, two Thunder Maw Hellkite. Seeming to be like a rather, rather universally adopted thing. Um, some differences in his deck is that he's playing Feeling of Dread and Mizium Mortars. He has less Pillar of Flame. I think he's correctly predicted a smaller amount of zombies in the metagame. That choice might hurt him here in this matchup, though. He's playing against Blue-White Humans. Yeah, Pillar is definitely his best card in the Blue-White Humans matchup. Marcus Handy, um, adopting uh, actually a deck that we saw that we deck teched in uh, in Cincinnati. The the, uh, the name of the deck tech is. Escaping me right now, he has War Falcons in his deck. War Falcon Precinct Captain Knight of Glory. He's turned on Champion of the Parish. Probably has to be the best one drop out of a Blue White Humans deck. So turn two, Ho, he's just developing his mana base. Uh, Marcus Hanoi is. Yeah, Hanoi, I believe, is, yeah, definitely gonna try to push damage as fast as he can here. So shocks himself with a Hallowed Fountain, dumping Knight of Glory onto the battlefield, counter on Champion of the Parish, and it'll swing for three. So th th that strength of Champion of the Parish really just to get three damage on its first attack. Yeah, that's um, so strong. Either in the form of the knight or two humans. Man, guys, the St. Trash is down for Hoey. Card is usually good. It's actually pretty weak in this matchup. Yeah, it certainly is. He might even trade that for this Knight of Glory if that gets it. Yeah, I mean, and he can only hope that he could trade it for Champion of the Parish. Right. That, that one probably won't be allowed. No. So Cavern comes down. Cavern... Naming has to be naming human here. Every, almost everything in his deck is a human. Yep. Uh, Legend Rule the Geist. Yep, the cavern is on human, even though he cast a non human off it. And interesting and then, to note, the, the only two things that Marcus Hanoi can do at instant speed in his entire 60 main deck is two faith shields. That's it. No activated abilities, even, on any of his other cards. So this is a sorcery no. speed deck for Marcus. Everything's Hanoi. a creature, actually. It's, just, it's all creatures. Yep. Yeah, that's not to say he has no removal. He has two Fiend Hunters in his main deck and three Lee of Sky Knights. So he has some quasi removal. So Holy Detention Spheres the Knight of Glory makes his fourth land and passes back. Still on the back foot, though. Um, he's building up. He has a Searing Sphere in his hand, it looks like, and I believe a no the second Detention Sphere. So he he's really got to hope that Hanoi plays out a second creature with the same, a, a same name card to get a two for one there. Yeah. I can go Silver Blade Paladin, giving Double Strike, Swinging Six. Wow. Hoey will drop to seven. Now Hoey does have that Mizium Mortars in his hand. Yep. Uh, he it may be one turn too short on Mizium Mortars. Or is that a Searing Spear? I think actually? it's a Searing Spear. Okay, Searing Spear, not Mortars. Searing Spear actually actually better here than Mizium Mortars. Yeah, it'll actually be able to stop him from dying. He's, he can't kill the champion main phase because then Silver Blade Paladin will be allowed to repair. So he's going to have to do it during combat. Right, giving the Marcus worry, the chance to blow The now. worry is that, let's see, it's, no, 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 it's fine, yeah. There's there's no way you can get blown out on that. I was worried for a second that the champ still would be allowed to repair, but that's not the case. No land for Matt Holy. Uh, the big thing with his deck is his deck is so temple-y, it's really hard for him to, to really, there's not a good line for him stabilizing here. Yeah, not really. I mean, his, his best play is to, is to kill one of Marcus's creatures and then, Follow up with what a, a Thunder Maw Hellkite in defensive mode. That's not really what he wants to be. Right, doing. and I think that's that's really saying how this this matchup is is really rough for me. The fact that you're talking about playing Thunder Maw Hellkite in defensive mode uh, is a very real thing. Uh, that second Cavern Souls was set to Angel. He does it now. You may be thinking it is uh, that means it's Restoration Angel. But the answer is it's Sublime Archangel. Ooh. It's the card that he's actually prepping it up for. In response to the trigger, he's going to Searing Spear, the champion, and then a swing for four by Hanoi. will drop Holy to a meager three. It looks like Snapcaster is going to jump in the way. Yep. So five instead. All right, so he drops to five. Last card in Hanoi's hand is the Lie of Sky Knight. How did I just play that out here? Uh, he, he opts to go differently. Yep, just ships it back. We got uh, fifth land for out of Holy. Uh, Hoey, remember, does have the, um, can Moorland Haunt to block a little bit. Hanoi's not really going to want to swing into Moorland Haunt because with, with two creatures, so yeah, we're going to see this play. I think Hoey will just bounce it off a, we may see, we may see him Searing Spear as well. Yeah, he's, he's definitely not just going to take it here. No. Yep, so Searing Spear is the War Falcon. Yep, and Matt, 
and uh, Marcus Hanoi just really flooded on lands here. It's interesting because he definitely feels flooded, but when you think about it, it's only six lands. That's not, you know, an unreasonable number of them. His deck really is about the explosive start, and if Hoey can mitigate that, then he can stay in the game for the most part. Right. Yeah, anytime you're an aggressive deck and you got six spells, six non-spells, it's... That's, that's not your ideal yeah. draw. A control deck can make that work, but aggro... Yeah, Sky Knight's going to detain the Snapcaster Mage. That actually doesn't allow him to push damage as Hoey has access to just a chump blocker with more land taunt. Mm -hmm. It looks like Hoey's thinking about it. That card's on the stack still. All right, it's going to dissipate the live Sky Knight. Oh, he dissipated oh. and didn't realize that it had been caverned. That's oh. a huge play. And now it looks like they're talking about right. which there's cavern some sort of discussion. Was yeah, that's true because that second cavern over there was the one set to Angel. Yeah, but he he also flipped them last turn. I'm not sure how that ends up drifting, but it's pretty confusing. I you know, um, it appears the, the the judges ruled that yeah it was uncounterable. So that just it's pretty awkward. Yeah, it sure is. Matt Hoey on two life now because he did take that three from the knight. And his Snapcaster Mage cannot attack. Yeah, that part of the ability not as relevant. <laughs> no. But Snapcaster won't be getting in the red zone this game. And with the Tension Sphere down the Elite Inquisitor, he has a, just enough mana to really to uh, chump with a Moreland Haunt token. Yep. Another land from Hanoi. And, you know, a really unfortunate situation there for Hoey. I think he was really in the driver's seat if that hadn't happened. Definitely. He's, he's not out of this game yet. You know, he still has one more Moreland Hot token that he can... Uh, right, but he hasn't use, uh, stabilized yet now right. as a result. Right. His last card is a Searing Spear, so... Wow, and he's drawn a Snapcaster, so oh, yeah. really good draw from Matt yeah. Hoey. Yeah, I, I still think... I still, I'm pretty fine with how this game has gone for, for Hoey. Is that Mizium Mortars? That's actually Mizium Mortars, okay. not a Searing Spear. He neglects to, or elects not to try to wait and overload it. It's just a little too dire of a situation for that. War Falcon comes down, and Hoey will haunt away the Geist. So, so War Falcon pass, threatening lethal. Yep, and it still does get to exalt. No more creatures in the yard for Hoey, so that's his last spirit token. I think Hoey did draw a red spell. It's probably a burn spell of some sort. No, yeah. mountain. It's a mountain? Mountain, I believe. Okay. I mean, you only could hope it was a Thunder Maw Hellcase. That would be a pretty sweet <laughs> draw here. Wow. But Knock that War Falcon down in combat? Sure would Yeah. Be. So if you're just joining us now, I'm Zach Call, and he's Matthias Sun, and we're coming to you live from Star City Open in St. Louis. We're watching Marcus Hanoi battle Matt Hoey in Game 1 of Round 4 of our Standard Open. Right, he's going to snap cast the Mizium Mortars. Remember, Mortis is a sorcery, and I like he's getting rid of the Knight of Glory, so he wants to move on the offensive. That spirit token, remember, War Falcon cannot attack until Matt Hoey draws. It has to be a Knight or a Soldier, which oh, for the Lie wow. of Sky Knight, uh, that, that's lethal. And that is a Knight or a Soldier. That is both. That is a, that is a perfect draw. Perfect, yeah. So game one to Marcus Hanoi. He drew all the lands early game, but he found the spell on the turn he needed it. Yeah. And he looks like this is all in a day's work for him. Yeah, Ho Ho's pretty upset, I think, here. Really probably feels like that game slipped away from him. Um, I'm not sure on the judge call there with the two there was the there were the two cavern of souls. You know, uh, one was set to angel, one was set to human. I'm not sure if it matters which one you physically tap, as long as the intention is there, it might be possible. I'm not it, it's I, I don't know. I'm I'm unclear on how that works. I, I believe if he says like he's using cavern, it probably does not matter. Right, say, so, yeah, if he said, use Cavern, play Leo Sky Knight, something like that. Yeah. yeah that's or it's possible he'd rearrange the lands. In which yeah. Case, yeah. It's kind of a tough spot, though, too, because the lands have nothing to really show which one is which, and especially if you're rearranging them, not leaving them on the opposite side of the board, it's, it's tough to know right. if you're Matt Hoey. So Matt Hoey, out of the sideboard, gets to become a much more controlling deck. Uh, he, he gets to, he, the cards that he has access to, I think he has six of them, yeah, Hoey. <laughs> Obviously upset with himself. 
Um, the cards he has to the goodness matchup. He has the full set of Pillar of Flames plus board. He gets access to two Supreme Verdicts and two Dungeon Geists. All of which I think are, are slam dunks in this matchup. Wow, yeah, all those cards are amazing. He's just going to turn into a, a board control mid-range deck here. Right, and he has a lot of cards which are pretty bad here. Guy to St. Traft is no good. Um, feeling of Dread was in his main, and that, that's also... I mean, it has some value as being a double fog, but that's really about it. Dissipate is really not what he wants to be doing in this matchup, especially versus Thalia, which Marcus has. Right, the, the worry about... I'm not sure... Yeah, he might board in an, an additional Thunderwall Hellkite, which he has... Perhaps a faith shield, but you know he needs to basically anything that can act as an early removal spell, even in only a situational one, will probably come in. Right. He just wants to, like you said, he wants to stabilize. That's the magic word. Yep. He wants to get the board to uh, to something resembling parity, and then his thunder Maw should take over, at least theoretically. On Marcus Hanoi's side, I don't think he has too many decent board options here. He really just. I mean, he has extras of some of the creatures he plays. Yeah, I mean, something like Thalia might come in. Uh, probably will come in. But Syncope, that's okay. Not really great in a sorcery speed deck. Riders of Gavoni, um, not really the matchup for it. Yeah, he, he, he doesn't have much here. His, his deck's going to remain a pretty solid package of uh, efficient creatures on curve. Right. At the top, like you said, Sublime Archangel. He may, he may board in, like, the Elite Inquisitor, just so he can cut down on Fiend Hunter. You may see, like, you know, situational boardings like that. Right. But other than that, his deck's probably staying largely unchanged. Yeah, it's pretty hard to deviate from a, a deck that plays 36 creatures. <laughs> it's, like, hard to change it up that much. A Detention Sphere in the sideboard. Not sure what that's for, but certainly not this matchup. Yeah. He could bring an island in the gate to syncopate. I guess I guess that could be his package for this matchup. Even that though, I'm not even sure that syncopating is what he wants to be doing right here. It's good, but Matt Hoey just has too many instants. Right, so Hoey's on the Hoey on the play. Starts off with the steam vents. Uh, Hanoi, no one drop. Hoey's got to be pretty happy about that. Yeah. Hanoi though has Dahlia at the ready. No, with no no counter spell for it, we may just see a, a three mana kill spell, or we'll see Geist of Saint Traps still in the deck. Interesting because it doesn't actually swing through Thalia. No, that's that's pretty embarrassing that your three drop can't beat the two drop from the offensive deck here. Well, Hanoi opting not to cast his blue, he's gonna pair, so Thalia will swing for four. Hoey drops to sixteen. Now Hoey can force that Geist through with a Searing Spear if he wants to, but. That means leaving the more dangerous Thalia in play, and not really advancing his board state. See, he's going to go for this attack, and I think he's hoping if that and that block is... I do not like that block at all. We're also not right, because it out of moments up to that play. I, I, Hanoi, at that situation, otherwise could have... I, I think taking six is correct. There. The counter swing is very powerful. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even that upset to trade a Thalia and a and a silver blade for those two spells because he, he does have another Thalia in his Well, hand. what's that doing? Okay, that's pretty good, the second Thalia. If he doesn't have a second Thalia, it becomes yeah. a lot less attractive. What it is doing is buying time for Matt Hoey, which is exactly what Hoey wants here. He has a replacement Geist for the one that was lost. Yep. And we see Sublime Archangel for Marcus. Uh, so which... Marcus just might slam that and get in. Right, I mean, it, 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 it'll, it can't remember, it can't get Searing Speared here either because of the Thalia that's in play. Yep, we'll drop, we'll drop Sublime Archangel. The real thing is he needs to make sure that he doesn't lose this race. You know, uh, Sublime Archangel is, um, is very much a heavy hitter, but that feeling of dread in his hand will have to only be used offensively. It can't tap the Geist. Yeah, this is interesting. It's like not even a clear attack. We'll swing but... with Thalia for four. Well, maybe not. Maybe he'll take Baxi's there. Depending on what he said, that might be fine. If he said, like, I'll attack with, hold on. If he does that, you know, that's probably okay. Right. I think they might be having some sort of life total dispute right now. I think they might be talking to the judges. Oh, oh, there we go. Three, four. Oh, he's at 12, and he's going to unsummon the Sublime Archangel on end step. Interesting he does that 
as opposed to when they go to attack. So he really actually wanted to try to bait Marcus into attacking there. It seems like Hoey's plan is to race. Right. If it was planned not to race, he simply wouldn't have done that. So with the Steering Spear in his hand, he has Mar uh, Hanoi at a virtual 7. Yeah, which is one swing. And he passes back the turn. Yeah, there was no dispute there. Marcus was just thinking on that last attack. And, you know, both players seemed fine with it. And clear communication is really what's important. Right. So the Sublime Archangel's in play here. Uh, Holy will let this attack happen. I'm pretty sure, you know, Burton then... Yeah, because he... Okay. Uh, yeah, he's going to take it. And he actually has Hanoi Dash. He has a Thunder Maw Hellkite and Searing Spear in his hand. So he's an end step, Searing Spear to the Dome. Seven, untap, and Hellkite for lethal. Yeah, that's exactly lethal. And, you know, Marcus really just uh, played this game a little too aggressively, I think. Yeah, I, I, I still don't like that. I think the, the, the most interesting part was when he decided to block with that Silver Blade Paladin, whether or not that was correct. Uh, Hoey doing exactly what he's supposed to do. Remember, Hoey is a tempo deck. That doesn't mean he's slower than Hanoi, but it doesn't mean that he's so slow that he can't, you know, that H Hanoi is not, has to be worried. Hanoi has to watch his own life total. It's not like the blue-white control versus blue-white humans matchup where he can just, you know, all, you know, where he can just ignore his own life to him. As we saw here, how he really can can stall and counter swing fairly legitimately. Right, and you know, you said that Geist was no good in this matchup, which I, I tend to agree with, but how he might just need it to yeah, have I mean, a way to kill him. I mean, it, I think it's fair to say it's on certain board states it's no good. When, when Hanoi just, like, spew stuff onto the battlefield, the Geist is pretty weak. Yeah, I mean, versus the champion draw, Geist is miserable, as we saw game one. Um, right. And especially with Matt Hoey on the play, it's okay game two. He might board some amount for game three. I mean, it's very similar. So, for those of you who played last season, if you played Delver, uh, you know, oftentimes, like, people would have mixed opinions on how much they liked Geist of St. Trapped against the zombies, for example. You know, it was like the card you didn't want to draw, but yet the way you won at the same right. time. Sometimes the way you stole games or you right. know, erase them. Right, and I think that's exactly, I think once again, it, you know, it is, uh, at its best, it's a 6-6 six, six for 3, and that's such a good clock. You can, you race aggro decks. And it's real easy to get those two points in some way. Yeah. That's going to happen at some point in the game, so it's really just three it was, swings, you're dead. It was really good because, as we saw, um, Marcus at the end of the game had a Lie of Sky Knight and a Feeling of Dread, so just, you know, Geist's tax proof really shines there. Yeah, and I, I didn't see him reach back to his sideboard, so I think he'll, he'll still have the Feeling of Dreads in his deck for game three. Oh yeah, it didn't look like he re-sideboarded at all. That card is, I don't know, I, I don't like it in this matchup. You know, I think I'm okay with it. Like, say, say for example, on that board where we had there, um, if, say, if Hanoi had some mana up, I think Feeling of Dread would, could have possibly, would probably won him the game. Yeah, that's true too. It's one of the few things that stops Thunder Maw Hellkite. Yeah, it's deck. poor against Geist, but that's really it. I, I, I'm okay with the falter effect that it does. It's okay against Restoration Angel too. It can yeah. prevent you from getting blown out in combat. Yep. Yeah. Oh, he all smiles here. <laughs> Knowing that he, he won a game, he lost a game that he also should have won. Or he feels like he should. I think, I think, I think game one... And he knows it. I think he knows that he, he very possibly threw away a win game one. Oh, for sure. Gonna draw a couple extra cards and then put them all in the hand. Oh, he will be on six. He's also on the draw. The scary thing, when I, when I look at blue-white humans, I almost sometimes when I play against that kind of deck, I feel like I'm playing against affinity. It's like when my opponent, you know when like, you know your opponent, like, you say you're playing against an affinity player and you've lost game one, or you won, you like, you let, let's say, you won game one, and your you're opponent, game your three. opponent, you're going to game three. Your opponent's on the play. He draws his hand, looks at it, and just goes keep. Right? Yeah. Just like, he's like, oh, oh goodness. Yeah, this <laughs> you know, is not good. This is like, right, and they're like, Mulligan. <laughs> he's like, oh no. It's like, I guess I'll mulligan this three lander, even though it has some spells in it. And you're almost expecting Marcus to be like, champ, like they like, drop three champions over the first two turns. You know, one of those yeah. draws. He's like, oh, this is unbeatable. Yeah, he looks very confident. He looked very happy when he drew his hand. Yep, and a one drop, and it's going to be Warcalc. War okay. Not champion of the parish. It's got to be better. Holy, uh, holy land to play tapped. Geist drawn for Marcus. That'll, that'll go well with the land in his hand. He's going to Thalia it up. Wow. Thalia is a knight. That is a great draw. One drop into Thalia is exactly what Marcus Hanoi wants to do here. 
exactly what Matt Hoey was afraid of. He has, he's not going to have any relevant play until turn three. So Hoey appears to have the supreme verdict in his hand. So the game has changed for him. The game has survived to... Is that a supreme? He does have one, right? I think it is. I, I believe his game has survived a supreme verdict. He has a... Yeah. He has a searing spear in hand, but he has no red. Oh. So Hoey drops to 14. And like he has to just stem the bleeding here. And Hanoi has opted... Yeah. Geist is in draft. He chose that over Silverblade Paladin. Yeah. Definitely a better answer here. Okay. Second searing spear for Hoey. And there is the red, so he will be able to knock that Thalia down. Yeah, his life total is very dangerously low. Yeah. He's taking 12 this turn. Yeah, and the best he can do is he can stop two of it. Right. Uh, Hanoi will probably drop a Silver Blade Paladin pre combat. Yeah. Cavern is set to human, by the way, not to spear. He was not worried about the Syncopate last turn, or the Essence Scatter. You're probably announcing using Cavern mana. Yeah. And there's the Paladin. And that'll probably pair with Geist of St. Trout. For 4, 8, 10 damage. But Thalia will be Searing Speared. And Supreme Verdict will be cast. And Searing Spear on Thalia. Matt Hoey to four, and we'll see if he has the land. Yep, there it is. And there we go. Supreme verdict. And scoop him up. Marcus Hanoi has only land now. Wow, and what a... It begs the question, do you think... And Geist is down. Do you think <laughs> that the, the Silver Blade Paladin was too aggressive on Hanoi's side? Yeah. I, I think it was a little bit too aggressive. And I think another Supreme verdict is in Matt Hoey's hand, and it's just... Geist's got to die, I think. Yeah, I don't see any other play for him. Yep. All right, Hoey stabilizing at four. And Hanoi drops his land, no plays. Yeah, again, Marcus Hanoi. Second, the second cavern is now on Spear, so. Okay. And a pass turn. So Hoey opts land. not to play Thunder My Hellcat. Instead, he's going to end step the Restoration Angel. Does get syncopated. Marcus did board in the syncopates here, but Marcus, be, because he's playing blue-white, can be hard-pressed to find that extra damage. Looks like another angel coming out, coming from Hoey's hand. Yeah, Matt Hoey is exactly where he wants to be, and his deck is not letting him down. He's drawing the parish, all the not game using cards. cavern mana. Oh, he has a Searing Spear, a Restoration Angel, and a Thunder Moth Alkite. He's going to pass the turn. He is exceptionally greedy here. <laughs> really wants to eat that guy with the Restoration Angel. And why not? Knight of Glory. Uh, yeah, 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 you had to think I was like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, that's fine. And champions can swing, but that's not enough. It's only a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, he's just acting here. <sighs> uh, and the greed pays off. Eat the Restoration Angel is just going to straight eat the champion of the parish. And I think we're going to see Searing Spear on Night of Glory. Maybe, no, no, no. He, he can wait on it. Yeah, he has, Unnecessary. He has three red now. He has, he has his third red now. Drawn a few more lands wow, with Moreland, Moreland Haunt. Haunt. Remember, he actually doesn't have a creature in his yard yet. Thundermaw, Hellkite, swings five. And he's leading back the Angel as a blocker. Hanoi drops to 15. Next turn, he'll be able to swing with both if he wants, putting Marcus on a two turn clock. War Falcon for Hanoi, so that, that, that Thundermaw Hellkite just a little too early to the party. Hmm. You know, not, I could have scored the two for one, but did not. Matt Hoey, though, still in the driver's seat. He's yeah, take a great not, draw. yeah he, he, he's live, though, the best part. You know, he drew another land here. So now he has to debate whether or not it's best to... I like the swing here, actually. I like swinging with Alki because the next turn you threaten, swing both spear your face. Right. I think, you know, it, it's interesting. He's got, he, he's got to be careful, but, but I, I think the swing is best. Yeah, there are there so many cards that win it for Marcus Hanoi off the top of the deck. You can't just burn that Searing Spear now. I mean, Feeling of Dread, for example. You're dead if he has it. Right. Yep, and if Hoey, it looks like Hoey agrees. He's going to go just for the 5 damage. Hanoi certainly won't be blocking. Goes to 10. Hanoi, what is the draw? If it's Lie of Sky Knight, that's also pretty bad. 
It is a land. Wow, another land for, for him. So him. Now, now it looks, I think, Hobie swings both. Yep, Marcus will be in trump lock mode here. And if he doesn't trump lock, then Matt Hoey wins on the spot. Yeah, the big debate for Hoey is do you swing one or both? Yeah, you know, Hoey yep, hasn't... And it's both. Yeah, I think that's the right play. He hasn't seen many instants from Marcus. He went, he went to combat first. Yeah. Okay, wait for Feeling of Dread. Feeling of Dread would have been a pretty good draw. So if you're the Humans player, if you're Marcus Hanoi, you're looking at what you believe you're out to be, and granted it's not, would be Chump Block, draw Sublime Archangel, or right. draw Knight of Glory. Right, or Silver Blade Paladin, or uh, there, are, uh, there are a few cards. Yeah, you have to know something's up. The problem is to say you know, if you suspect a Searing Spear, which this attack reeks of, then I don't think you have it. No, you're, you're, you're out is a feeling of dread. Yeah, feeling of dread into something, into feeling of dread into something, probably. He's drawn precinct captain. That's not going to do it. No. no way to push the fourth damage through. Concedes the game. Matt Hoy defeats Marcus Hanoi two games to one. Redeems himself from his game one. <laughs> wow, all the Searing Spears. Matt Hoey just had a really good draw that game. He was just set up so well with the two Supreme Verdicts, needed both of them. Uh, Thundermont Hellkite, they actually put a clock on Marcus. Just all in all, uh, a few good games of Magic there. Yeah. Uh, those are all very close.